The modern Karaikan state is, officially, a federation of monarchies with its executive power split between two houses of government, the Baronic Council and the Ignoble House, organized under an independent state body, the federal Karaikan monarchy. There are nine state governments subordinate to the FKG, the major houses, each of which is further composed of hundreds of minor houses, dynastic filial organizations that make up and reproduce the noble class, and manage the broad ignoble populations of the baronies. The upper house of the FKM is the Baronic Council, which is the chief officiating body of the royal provinces and bears responsibility for managing the affairs of the noble classes, those that sit on the council as a representative of a major or minor house officially hold the title of baron. The Baronic Council hears and sets broad policy goals, resolves disputes between the houses, and provides counsel to the Prime Baron, its chief executive, and the monarch of the Karaikan state. The Prime Baron is elected from their peers for a life appointment and holds extremely strong executive powers, seats on the Baronic Council are similarly guaranteed for life, upon the passing or abdication of a councillor, the vacant seat is filled by a representative chosen via a vote and the assent of the Prime Baron. Candidates must be of noble title and seats are allocated between major houses based on a dizzying number of factors, some of which change frequently due to political maneuvering or court intrigue. The lower house of the FKM, the Ignoble House, is much larger than the Baronic Council and has a much broader portfolio. The Ignoble House is the legislative body of the federal Karaikan monarchy, and sets the laws, budget, and policies for the entirety of the Karaikan trade baronies, not just the nobility. Despite its less prestigious title and the presence of ignoble legislators, the ignoble house is thought to be the more important of the two houses when it comes to commanding power across the baronic concern. The head of the ignoble house, the premier, is voted into power by the members of the ignoble house, and is generally seen as subordinate to the prime baron, though their management of the house neutral affairs of the FKG means they are still quite powerful in practice. The noble houses of the modern Karaikan state are both dynastic filial organizations, and professional administrations. More than just families, the minor houses are diplomatic and administrative organizations endowed with a wide portfolio of powers backed by a combination of material and social capital, each oriented around the interest of their baron. The largest minor houses command their own militaries and hold vast swathes of lands, even whole moons or stations, the smallest can barely rub two coins together. Politically, the minor houses span a broad spectrum, from the arch-conservative hagiographic houses to the reformist republican houses. What unites them is their noble heritage, regardless of capital, all noble lines are recorded in the baronic record by the heralds of the xenoglossary and, by virtue of this, have certain rights not afforded to the ignoble masses. For the members of the baronic noble class, there is no ceiling to how high they can rise, and a definite floor that they will always, at least socially, stand above. Minor, in this context, only denotes a house's administrative role, and says nothing about its political or military power. As I have previously mentioned, succession in the baronies is increasingly based more on the approval of the current leadership than strict birth order. Minor houses, unless they are quite small or conservative, tend to operate less like pure sequential dynasties than as meritocratic favor-based organizations, heirs are chosen by predecessors, formalized as such by the baronic council, and their claims assured regardless of temporal desync. This has significantly reduced occurrences of regicide and succession bloodshed, but even though nominally banned across the baronies by the federal Karaikan monarchy, and typically not large-scale, filial and succession violence is frequent. Unsanctioned events, such as assassinations, off-book duels, small-scale combat, and etc., occur very often, and the penalty for openly committing such an act tends to be courtly censure rather than carceral or martial. Once the act has been committed, of course, the victor tends to have secured enough political power or capital to simply pardon themselves in the eyes of the state, in the halls and courts of the nobility, they may have even won a claim and favor for their maneuvering. The masses, the rabble, the might of the baronies, the massed ignoble population of the baronies dwarfs the nobility, but the development of a pan-concerned political consciousness has yet eluded them. This is changing, thanks in large part to the republican movement, spearheaded by the houses of water and dust, that seeks to grant equal rights to all citizens and abolish the nobility's political power entirely. Conservative houses, neo posikolians and hagiographers, are bitter opponents of republicanism. The Federalists, meanwhile, find themselves strung between tradition and social revolution, struggling to manage both as the baronies parades on through history. To be ignoble in the baronies, whether in the concern or the interest, is to be one of hundreds of billions, owing to the kaleidoscope of development levels across baronic worlds and stations, 
ignoble means many different things. On one world, it may mean pastoral feudalism, on another, it may refer to a broad strata of urban laboring classes, on republican worlds, to be ignoble is a useless distinction inside the borders of one's house, you are simply Satoyan, no more noble or ignoble in legal title than your fellows. To be a subject of the baronies, whichever house you are born into, is to be a part of the great unbroken chain of human life that has persisted since the Anthropocene. In school, by tutor, or at academy, students learn that Karakis, not Cradle, is the cultural and historical center of the galaxy. While humanity may have come from Cradle, Earth, as it is known across the baronies, the species was saved by Karakis, nurtured by that world, and sent back out into space once more. Cradle's time has passed, no matter what Union says, it is Karakis that will lead humanity into the future. Patience, in the baronies, is one of the high virtues, and, not consequently, enshrined in Karakan faith as one of the passions. The baronies is not a monolithic culture, despite how it may seem to outside observers, this perception is exacerbated by the insular nature of the Karakans, their relative lack of concern with galactic politics, and their deference to old systems of monarchy. Though Union's metropolitans might see the baronies as a backwards-looking enclave, an albatross around the neck of their vision, they still acknowledge that powerful forces for reform are active within the borders of baronic space. Nevertheless, in a large swathe of the baronies, social class is firmly enshrined in a massive apparatus of nobility and ignobility. Broadly speaking, persons of noble class have some claim over land or resources, with a recorded ancestral history, and even before the Anorum Posicalia, Karakan nobility has always been intertwined with the government that seeks to rule. Government, until the new federation, was always viewed as the provenance of those with the power and will to rule, those willing to go through the trouble of it, who could rule, were usually accepted as the correct ruler. In the pre-Anorum and Anorum systems, rule was often patriarchal and cruel, unfair by modern standards, after the dynastic late and the brief new federation, rule has been granted by baronic consent. Depending on the politics of the person being asked, this could be seen as a less cruel method, or one that is exploitative and cruel in a different way. Regardless, to be ignoble in the baronies is too often to be deprived of privileges afforded to a select few by accident of birth. This system, a mix of conservative monarchy and cultural thought, plus a history spanning millennia, is, perhaps surprisingly, widely accepted as oppressive by most ordinary people in the baronies. Despite this, Many of the larger factions continue to uphold it out of a sense of momentum, cultural myth, and historic identity. Both liberal and federalist houses are famously slow to change and have little impetus to sign on to any such massive upheaval, and both the hagiographic houses and neo posicalian movements actively and fiercely support it. It is only the Republicans, growing in number and influence but not necessary in power, that have overturned the system, and only with tremendous and steady effort. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some coffee. links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.